I'm just going to get started, crack straight into it because I actually do want to share this video as well to some um, other groups that um, where, um, where our ladies need some help with learning how to do just a really nice basic makeover for specifically for our age group. So um, first of all, I have to just say... Um, it's just such a, um, an honour and a privilege and a pleasure to be able to, you know, for you guys to trust me to show you how to do makeup and how to help your skin um, be the best skin that it can be. So as you know, my skin was an absolute disaster and just only, you know, three years ago I was washing my face with shampoo. I can't even believe that I'm saying that now but I just thought my skin was I thought there was no hope for it so I just didn't care I just was like wash your hair wash your face whatever get out didn't you know I just thought there was no hope for my skin so I had such bad skin all of my life that I just did not think <clears throat> that there was a, an even minute bit of hope that I could ever have better skin so um, discovering obviously this brand and um, seeing the very, very fast results in my skin and um, now the fact that I go most days wearing no makeup except for if I'm doing like a tutorial or if I have somewhere actually to go, um, I would never ever in a million years have walked around with no makeup on when I was, you know, just even three years ago. No way. So this brand, that's why I'm so passionate and that's why I have those one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, conversations with you in Messenger and why I want to work specifically with you through the different elements and through the journey of your skin with you because um, I know that you can't just give someone a skincare set and go here you go that's your skin care set, um, care set for life um, you know just go away go for it and you know keep buying the same product it's not like that your skin is um, can be unpredictable and it's it's a journey like skin and makeup it's a journey like your skin might be really amazing one month and then the next month it might be overly dry and a bit scaly and you know there's all sorts of things that happen so I want to be on the journey with you and I want you to message me I want you to come to me if you need help and things are going wrong in your skin and I don't want to stop with just giving you a skincare that I think is good I want you to be I want to be on the journey with you so today we're actually just doing a makeover, but I am going to use the Irina um, one. So this is called Wild Melon Wonder Oil. You know that um, everybody is raving about this now. So it was just me to begin with, but like <laughs> as people are trying it, they're just going, what the heck is this crazy hocus pocus stuff? Um, so it is just amazing. It's like... Um, so lots of girls um, use rosehip oil because I guess that's all that they know about oils and really it was kind of all I knew. Um, and then um, this came out and this thing, this thing, this little little bottle of um, magic is like rosehip oil on mega steroids. It is just insane. So it's actually got rosehip oil in it. And it's got nutri uh, it's got apricot kernel oil in it. So my two like so nutritional, you know, it's my favourite moisturizer. So that's actually the ingredient of that, that's a healing ingredient, is in this, along with rose oil and, and along with um <clears throat> how many was I think it's like eight, seven or eight key oils that are in there. So I'll give you a list of those after, but I'm not talking about um the oil today. But I just wanted to show you that it's a really beautiful beautiful product to wear under your makeup it is just in without makeup like it's just a lovely lovely you can put this so it's a booster like it's called a booster so it's like a serum but you can actually use this for a moisturizer and I often do during the day because I feel like it's enough I feel like I feel like I'm getting really nourished skin um, using this product and I feel like it's enough. I feel like I get enough moisture out of it. But you can actually put your own, your day creams over top of it. Or you can push, because it doesn't, <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't have a sunblock in it. So you can put your sunblocks on over top of it, over top of it if you like. So this um, SPF is 50. I'm not going to do it today because I'm not going out in the sun. But I'd, I'd usually use that over top of the melon oil. Okay, so you can't use this or you shouldn't probably use this if you're allergic to nuts because obviously it's got lots of Brazil nuts and all, I mean, I don't know if those are allergens, but there's lots of like kind of nut derivatives in that one. So don't probably, don't probably use that if you're 
I've got nut allergies, but other than that, it's a good one. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the primer because um, look how I love this oil. It's so, oh, it's so amazing. Oh, it just feels like, just feels glorious on your skin. It just does. Oh my gosh. If you actually are um, using oil at the moment, if you're using this melon oil at the moment, just let me know because say in the comments if you're, if you're using it because I know if you've got it, I know you're going to be raving about it. And um, if you're using rosehip oil, try this. Try this because it's $39.90, but it's got rosehip oil in it as one of the seven or eight ingredients. All right, so I'm going to go um, blurring primer. So with a primer, you just want to pop it over the top of that oil. Again, that's just like, you know, so if you put moisturizer on, just pop your um, primer over. Blurring primer, lots of ladies with way better skin than me because I would just, I would not want to go out with just blurring primer on. But if you've got quite nice skin anyway, um, lots of the girls just use the blurring primer by itself because it actually does blur out quite a bit of the discoloration on your skin. So it's quite amazing. I don't know. I don't know exactly how that works because I've got lots of, as you can see, I've got lots of discoloration. I've got old acne scars. I've just got um, hereditary kind of dark circles around my eyes. I've got broken capillaries. I've got I've got the Wix Burger because I had really bad skin all my life, so that was kind of me just out of luck with my skin. But um, for those of you who have got better skin, the blurring primer might just be enough, and you could just go out and have a lovely, um, radiant-looking skin for the day. Right. So, I always, well, my favourite is um, this camel, well, my colour's camel. My favourite is the Flawless Ear Serum, and the reason for that is because it's actually got a serum in it as well. So, again, I'm, I'm talking about this being um, a makeover for the much more mature of us. I'm really fumbling my words today, but here we go. So, you literally only need between one and three drops of this product. I'm just checking that I've got the right colour there, camel. Okay. You need one in, between one and three drops of this product. It goes a million miles. Now watch this. So you can see um, quite how I've got the darkness and the redness and broken capillaries and all sorts of colours going on on my face. So I'm going to show you um, how nicely this covers up and how far it actually goes. So, And it also blends up. So it looks a little bit brown or yellowy on my skin now, but it blends out quite um, more skin colour. So I'm just going to put this all over the shawl. I might just do, I won't go over this eye area, I'll just show you this, this eye first. So you can see actually how much um, coverage you get, even though it's really thin, like the product is so fine, but it still gives you the most incredible coverage. So if you're somebody who doesn't like wearing a really heavy, heavy coverage um, foundation, it's just amazing. And um, just an FYI, I always will put my uh, makeup on with my fingers, my foundation on with my fingers first because I always feel like I lose too much. Um, oh, I'm doing that eye by accident. I always feel like I'm losing too much product when I use my brush to start with. So I'm just putting it on with my finger to start with and then I'm going to buff it out. But you can see, okay, hold on, I'll buff it out now so you can see. Um, around your eye area, just press it out. You don't want to drag around that eye area. As you get older, you get all the fine lines and the puffiness and all that going on around your eyes. You don't want to really, really be dragging around that skin, but look at the difference. Oh, I can't hardly see now, we're all blurry. Um, the difference between the discoloration in this eye, more red and all, like blue and all sorts of colors in that eye, and then this eye. It's just out of it. And it's not a lot, like I've, I did one drop and I've still got all of that. So now I'm going to go cover up this blue and red eye. I haven't actually done um, a Makeup Women um, tutorial in here for ages, far out. So just buff it all out and you honestly, the because you've got that melon oil, oh my gosh, it's amazing. That your makeup just oh, just slides onto your skin. I'm going down here because I've got a real big white thing under my neck where the sun obviously doesn't go. 
and you can just join that color of your face up to your chest so you don't look like there's a big you know disjointed color in between your chest and your face so um, when you choose a foundation color you should just really look at really your chest and your face and how well that matches because you don't want to have like your skin might be really fair on your face it might actually be quite white um, but if you go and put white on your face because your skin is white on your face and then you your chest is like quite a lot darker then it's just going to look like you're wearing a mask so what you want to do is you want to just at least have some kind of graduation of color between your chest neck and face uh, right and I always use um, wipes after I've done my foundation because you end up looking like you've been dead for a week when you paint your lips with foundation okay and I always like to get it out of my eyebrows as well because when you've got foundation on your eyebrows they look like ginger eyebrows no offense <laughs> no offense to ginger eyebrows just that it's foundation ginger so I always like to take that out of my brows and then I just kind of clean that up over top right so the thing about that foundation is look it's like skin it's like skin but it gives you enough coverage that I mean I used one drop of that right one drop one drop one single drop over my entire face and it says that you can use between one and three drops but you can use whatever you bloom and light. You don't have to follow any rules. But between one and three drops. And I used one over my entire face. So that's pretty epic. Now I'm going to show you this because. Hold on a second. I'm going to show you this. Because um, some of you prefer. I'm just checking my colors some of you prefer to have a powder so I'm just going to show you what the powder is like even though I've already done my foundation it's still really light and it's really dewy you could actually if you wanted more coverage you could actually put on this thin layer of foundation that I've got on right now and then you could put your um, powder over the top of that so let me just show you I'm just using the sand right now it might be a little bit too fair for me at the moment but that's the one that I've got here at the moment so I'm just going to put this and I'm going to show you down In fact, I might just use a brush because I don't want too much thickness of coverage because I've already got a foundation on. So I'm going to use this brush. And this literally gives you an entire makeup. You wear This is a, this is a makeup all on its own. But you can actually wear it to thicken up your coverage. And look at the difference. Like, See, that's still really dewy because I've got um, the serum foundation on. And then that one's a little bit more mattified, but it's still got a really dewy look to it. I might put on that side as well. All of our foundations and our powders are freaking amazing, man. And I love that they don't, they're not full of chemicals. So, because you know, your skin is your largest organ and it absorbs everything. And so you're putting foundations on your face that come from um, places where, you know, the, they use a lot of chemicals or they're not tested as well. Um, ours are, ours are not tested on animals either. They should be tested on ex-husbands, I always say, but they are not tested on actual animals, which is amazing, and they are plant-based, so they're really awesome. All right, so that is our foundation base, okay? Look how, look how nice it is. Even with the uh, powder over top of a foundation that's still so thin like that's still I mean the coverage is great but it doesn't look all thick and gluggy it's not all stuck into the lines around the eyes or anything like that so it's just a beautiful oh, our foundations and powders are amazing okay so I'm going to use the matte palette because I just want to show you how to create a bit of an eye look and I'm just going for quite a um you know quite a, a basic kind of day look so because I just want to show you how to do a basic makeover um for older skin you we tend to get a little bit more baggy around the eye area here if you've got like a completely hooded down eye area um you can still do this trick but you've just got to pretend um to go where the creases are so for example I'm going to use a little bit of this kind of darkish beige here 
and what we're going to do i always put the product on and then i just kind of dust it off a little bit so i haven't got like too much dark product going straight on my face but what you want to do is we want to sort of be on the eye socket bone right there that's where we're sort of aiming for the eye socket bone and slightly upwards so slightly above there and we just want to go on this area here and backwards and forwards so again if you have a really thick hooded um, eye and there's just a whole lot of skin there you still do this but you literally just say to yourself okay the eye socket bone is right there underneath all of that skin because I've done lots and lots of makeovers like that and you just apply it where the eye socket bone would be and what it's doing when you apply it like that is it's mimicking that there's a, cr a bit of a crease there so you just want to go backwards and forwards the little circles and over the rainbow so you're just going like this backwards and forwards but round and round the circles at the same time and just remember hold it really nice and loosely in your hand like you're a drummer because it's going to blend out and it's going to break down and blend out really heaps better and easier if it's got loose and fluid movements if you're pressing too tight like a pen um, it's just not going to really smoothly break up that product and make it look really because we just want this to be really, really um, smoky. This is basically what a smoky eye is. It's just you add different colours um, to. So like if you wanted to do a like black smoky eye, you'd start with you know a black and then a grey and then a you know it's just graduation of colours from one the lightest to the darkest. So it's the same technique though. All right. So it's just backwards and forwards, round and round, until you feel like that colour's broken all the way down and it just looks really smooth and like just really smoked out. Now, let me just tell you, this is a trick and this is for um, more for the mature age group, but also the youngins probably shouldn't do this either. But when we're getting older, our eyes start getting a bit more droopy and the skin starts flapping down and all those bloody lovely things that happen to us as we get older. What we want to do is we want to make sure that 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 eye makeup doesn't go down flopping over the side of your eye there so you want to make sure if it's gone over you want to just get a cotton bud even and just clean that up on the outside of the eye there do it when you do it when you finish doing all your blending but i'm just showing you um because you know that, that way it looks like your makeup's going up uphill like this and then your eyes look happy and awake and uphill and like gravity's on our side and it isn't <laughs> sorry about it um so we're just faking we're just faking that our eyes are going uphill so if you put your if you put your um eye pigment on and especially if it's a darker color and it slops over the side your your eyes are going to be like hmm like <laughs> they're just going to look like sad eyes okay so round and round in circles backwards and forwards you know what guys don't even worry if you can't watch this whole thing you can always oh, <coughs> <having a choke. coughs> you can always go back and watch this later or and you can fast forward through all the blending bits if you feel like it's taking too long oh i <coughs> got something on my throat oh um so round and round in circles backwards and forwards remember all we're doing is just trying to break up all that color and then you just want to kind of look at the other eye and go, okay, does that look, you know, symmetrical? It doesn't have to be perfect, but you just don't want this eye to be really dark and this eye to be really light. And then it looks like you've been socked in this eye. This eye looks a bit deeper because, you know, dark, dark recedes and light brings out. So you just want the color to look quite even on each eye. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is, um, this is just makeup not plastic surgery okay so um all right so you can choose any color you like on your eyelids but just let me tell you that when you go for a um my eyes look all um like all glassy and that because i have taken all the color out of my eyes so some they look like quite dead <laughs> but if you um if you have um if you want your eyelids to look like they're there because some people have eyelids that just kind of recede straight back and disappear into your 
eye socket and honestly those that's just one of the things of aging as well and then there's just um, certain people who have sort of more receded um, eyelids and things so if you want your eyelids to stand out a little bit more you'd want to go for a, a lighter color so like a nude across your eye so if you look at the two eyelids right now if I go and um, put some just gonna use my little mirror here if I put the cream straight onto my eyelid now you can already see that that one stands out more just trying to get some more so if you want a really super natural not super natural but a super natural looking eye you can just literally put that cream on your eyelid and then that's that's enough that's enough of uh like that still makes you look like you've got really nice eye makeup on it makes your eye look kind of more awake and open and brighter and um so you could just go with that that could be your entire eye look and um, with a bit of mascara on top as well if you want something a little bit more zhuzhy you could go with something a bit more sparkly and i like all these ones because they've all got a little bit of shimmer so you could go with um you could go with something like champagne -y, or you could go with like something a little bit more um beigey or a pink or whatever it's up to you um, what am I going to do I might just go with that white one to show you on the other side so this is a bit champagne color and this is nice nice little bit of sparkle shimmer and that's the other thing you can wear a shimmer in this age group you don't have to be 20 to wear a shimmer um, but what you don't want to be uh, what you don't want to be wearing rather is glitter so shimmer shimmer is fine glitter not so much <laughs> okay so I'm going to do that on the other eye as well because I quite like a little bit of shimmer I'm going to do that but you can see that that um, nude eyelid and even the shimmered side one but you can see that the nude eye look looking more matte um, is a nice natural look mm. on your eye I'm just going to put a bit of shimmer on there as well to just make them look the same cool okay so um to show you so this is another little trick with our eyes as you get older first of all um, I recommend and you I mean just again first learn all the rules and then break them as you wish or but I recommend to start going a bit softer on your eye color so this here is charcoal this is not black and charcoal is just gonna look slightly less harsh on your eyes your eye area and i'm doing that in the waterline which takes a little bit of getting used to but the reason why i'm doing that is because it actually makes your lashes appear more dense and more closely together so that means that when you go to put your mascara on you have like a way thicker black line of mascara so it looks just way more dense on the top of your eye there um and the other thing that i do so um it's totally up to you you can still continue on using your eyeliner you could use a liquid liner um you can use whatever you like and you can also use whatever colors you like but it's just that as you get older and you know i'm talking about you know maybe when you're still in your early 30s you're okay but i'm you know 45 this year and so as you get older it just looks more harsh to have really dark colors around your eyes again totally up to you um i'm not your judge whatsoever i'm just telling you for this age group um it's just a lot softer if you go for lighter colors so i'm literally using a brown out of the matte pigments and i'm using an angle brush so that's what people would use for their eyebrows usually and i'm using the dark brown well it's not really dark brown but it's just that warm brown and I'm going to put, so I just usually will dust that off a little bit so that it's not going to have dropped down onto my face, but it might anyway. And then I just hold my lashes down because I blink at about a thousand miles per hour when I'm trying to put um, colours on my eyes. And I just go in little tiny sweeps across the top of the eye line there. And I'm going to put a little bit more brown on and I'm just dipping the colour off one side and off the other again so that I don't have the drop down. And I'm holding my lashes down and I'm just going to work that color in really close to the lash line and then I'm just going to take it a little bit off the edge there and upwards not too much just enough to make it look like it's going slightly more uphill 
and I'm going to do that again. My eyes still look a little bit like glassy at the moment, but you watch, you watch. Okay, so I'm going to do the same on the other side, the brown, and I'm going to backwards and forwards so I don't have the drop down, holding my lashes down. as close to the lash line as possible because what we're trying to do is make it look like an eyeliner but actually make it look more like your lashes are really dense and also um, if you stick close to the lash line when you open your eye it's not going to be like if you don't go really close to the lash line you open your eye you're going to find it's up quite can be up quite high and then you've got to try and adjust the height on each eye so it's actually just easier to get it as close to the lash line as possible and now I'm going to use where's my little okay now I'm going to use my little blending it's a little it's a little tiny blending brush and I'm going to use that to break up the color of that brown on the top of the eye because when you smudge out your eyeliner it's such a softer look and you still look like you've got eyeliner on but it's really soft which means that it's really less aging way less aging on your eyes now this is totally and entirely up to you you don't have to do this I tend to avoid this because I um well for a start I don't wear heaps of makeup um, really that much anymore anyway but I tend to avoid this because when you've got small eyes like I've got little eyes um if you put eyeliner around the bottom you're actually going to make your eyes look smaller again another tip about your eyes is um as you're getting older, you want to make sure that you, most of your makeup color is on the top of your eyelid um, because anything, you know, the old um, the old black eyeliner that we used to wear underneath our eyes from one end of the other at high school, um, that will just drag that whole look down and it's incredibly aging um, looking to have um, the black eyeliner. But I've just literally used the same brush that I've put the little bit of brown on the top of my eyes. I haven't added any color to that. And I just um, put a little bit of whatever is left on that brush and I'm just smoothing it down under my eyes like that. And that creates a bit of an eyeliner look underneath, but it's not a harsh one. You can see it's like a not a heavy look. So that's between those two little palettes. Those palettes are both freaking amazing. I find it hard to choose if I had to choose one, which... Um, you know, obviously you usually buy one at a time. If I have to buy one, it's like, ugh, it's a bit painful. But um, the matte ones are really good to start with. If you have not done eye makeup before, they're really good to start with because they've got those basic colours, like the eyeliner colour, the blending colour, the eyelid colour, and you can actually play along, play around with these ones when you get a little bit more confident about this colour. Um, but these ones are a little bit more zhuzhy, so once you're actually a little bit more confident with your makeup, maybe... Or you just like, you know, pretty sparkly things that you could go with that one. Right. So that's my um, that's my eye makeup. A really soft, really, really soft, really, really basic makeup. And actually, I could do that so quickly if I wasn't talking you through it. It's a really easy and quick makeup. Ooh, that was disgusting. Cold coffee. Okay. So um, I love these um eyebrow pencils because they've got the little spoolie at the end which means that you can first of all brush your brows up and just have a look at the you know just have a look and see if there's oh, big gaps in your brows because really for me and and again for this age group as you get older you don't want to have big block eyebrows but what you want is you want to just look for those gaps and fill in those gaps you don't want to have really thick muppety eyebrows but you also don't want to have little thin spindly little eyebrows either so if you do have spindly little eyebrows I'm sorry about that but <laughs> but you can actually draw them on if you like but just make sure that you use softer colors so you don't want to go black and heavy and hard unless you know unless you already have really jet black eyebrows um, you want to stick to lighter colors so I will generally go with it. So this is a this is natural. So this is the in between color. So there's an ash blonde, but because my hair is so dark at the moment, um, uh, I am using the natural color, which is the in between color. But usually I just go for a bit of ash blonde through my front of my brows, 
and then just do the tail end with the natural color and again just you just can go through any little sparse bits in, in your brows and if there's any gaps just kind of color over them and it's not you're not drawing them on you're not going eh, 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 eh. you're not making like slug brows you're literally just putting a bit of color in and then you can brush them through and it actually kind of takes the color through a little bit so it just kind of drags the color through a little bit so I'd like tend to brush them up and then just tidy them down on the top and you can do this with an eyebrow powder as well or um, an eye pigment you can use so you can use any uh, well not this one because there's not really a color in there that would make a good eyebrow color but you can use eye pigments for this as well and I, t I do that quite a bit okay so that um right uh all right i haven't showed you this and i actually probably have done this in the wrong order now so but anyway we've got little little concealer little ones here it's totally up to you this is really just a brightening technique and really for us we just want to go um, i might only do one eye because i actually should have done this back in the beginning when i was doing the foundation but just a little tiny bit in the corner here and even maybe into that area there where you, you get a little bit of darkness in there because there's a bit of a vein that runs through there. We've got these cool little sponges. I'll show you. Tiny weeny little sponges that are the cutest things and they're so good for those inner eye area. So just a little bit of concealer on there. So if you didn't know, we've all got a little vein that runs into the corner of the eye there. And if you don't cover that up with a bit of concealer if you're somebody who gets quite dark eyes you'll actually look quite sunken in in there because you can even see the shadow on this side which you you know you um it's just the shadows that make you and the color blue underneath your skin but it's just those sort of dark blue blue grays and the shadows that make you look really tired so just putting a tiny little bit of concealer into that space works wonders and then if you're going to put concealer anywhere else, I think gone are the days of us putting buttloads of concealer concealer into a big V down here and making it look all bright. Um, and that might work for the young girls, but again, you know what concealer does to your skin? It makes your wrinkles look really more obvious. So I'd just put a little bit on the outside of the eye and just drag it up. Not drag, but <laughs> that's wrong. And just bring it up and that just makes your eye area look a bit brighter, a bit of illusion, and it just makes it look more happy and smiley and more awake. Okay, so uh, a little bit of blush. I, you don't have to do any or all of these steps. I'm just showing you all of the basic steps to making a really pretty natural makeover. You can skip whatever you like. If something doesn't suit you, don't, um, don't bother. I'm just going to put a little bit of peony blush on. But... You know, I'm just showing you, giving you all of the all of the tips and tricks, and then you just do what you want. So I just put the I'll put the blush on first, and then I will dust it off because it's better to have less to begin with. Otherwise, if you plonk it on your face and you've got heaps, it's a lot harder to take off. And then so I'll just tap it on my hand first. There's not too much there. You want to go to the apples of your cheeks, and you want to go on the apples, but you want to go back up into the hairline there. Okay, and I'm not going to do anything else just right now because that is a lot, already a lot of colour. I'm going to do the other side and then I'm going to blend it out. So smile onto the apples of your cheeks and then up into your hairline because you don't blush on the front of your face or the apples of your cheeks. You blush, you flush all the way back into your hairline and your ears usually go bright pink as well. But we won't, we won't paint our ears today. And then you can add as much colour as you like, but I'm, I'm not big on huge amounts of blusher. I just like a little, sort of like a tiny little pinch of pink and then brush it into the hairline. And then I will usually just grab um, my blending brush and I'll just really buff it out because I just want it all, all of the colour broken up so it doesn't look like the main thing about makeup is just making sure that whatever colours you put on, you break up any harsh lines. And so everything looks really well blended and really seamless. So you don't, you can't really even see it. Just looks kind of like flushed and a little bit, you know, like a little bit more alive, I suppose. Okay, I'm going to use 
this mascara and then I'm going to tell you something pretty epic. So I do love this mascara. It was my first one I fell in love with um, with Nutrimedics. It was the first one that I can't remember whether I was given it or what happened, but um, I know that I was really excited about it. And so um, what, I, what I got the most excited about was the fact that I could put on my mascara. It wasn't too thick, so I wasn't really big on big, huge lashes, but it wasn't really thick, but it still did a really nice job. Um, but... It's a four-in-one mascara, so it's actually got some conditioning agents in it, which make your lashes just um, much healthier. And I don't have long lashes, so it's not gonna, um, they're not gonna show up intensely, but it's just a really, really nice mascara, and it's really conditioning. So what I got the most excited about was that I found out that you can put this mascara on. I always just dot the end off. Um, so that I don't get a clump of black on my lashes. But what I got most excited about is at the end of the day, when you go to put your, well, you know, if you're going out again and you just want to zhuzh your makeup up again, and I found this out by accident, that you can actually redo your lashes at the end of the day with this formula without taking your mascara off. You can literally just reapply a little bit of mascara and it doesn't go clumpy or gross. It's so weird. It's so weird, but I guess it must be because it's got the conditioning agents in it. Um, but this is not a waterproof mascara. Um, but in saying that, I've mm. never had this run all down my face either. That one's a little bit thicker than this one, but I'm going to be here all day if I even them up. But yeah, you can go thicker and heavier, it's up to you. Okay, so I, I tend to not put um, mascara on my bottom lashes. Um, every now and again I do, but not very often because, again, when, as you get older, like you want your eyes to look like they're smiley and going uphill. And so when you're putting dark colours on the top of your eyelids, that's fine. But when you're putting them on the bottom of your eyelids, it's just kind of, it sort of just defeats it, the purpose, and it just, and it just kind of drags them down a little bit. Um, doesn't mean that everybody's going to look really old because they put mascara on their bottom lashes, but just, you know, just saying that it is just a little bit heavier looking um, when you put mascara on your bottom lashes. I'm just going to quickly finish off with some lip gloss so I don't look dead. These lip lightning lip glosses are on special too, they're cool as. Mm. That's not my favourite colour, but that'll do it. It was just right there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you something. Okay, this is mental. Okay, so that's that's like you can actually do a setting spray, and you can. Um, there's so much more you can do. You can do um, concealers, and you can do um, contouring, and there's all sorts of things that you can do. But I'm going to show you right now, quickly. I'm just looking at my laptop right now, so I don't miss anything. All right, so I'm just going to put it together right now. So just hold the line, please, callers. I'm going to put all these back in. So this is the brush bag. This is, um, it's really dirty because I have got foundation fingers all the time, but I'm going to put these five brushes in here, right? Okay, so, and my, making, trying to make it look all really like nice and tidy. Okay, hold on, wait there, wait there, wait there, just wait there. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm doing a little, I'm just doing a little gathering of the things because you're going to be freaked out. Freaked out. I'm just making sure everything's there. Palettes. Yep. 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 Wait on, wait on, wait a second. That. Yep. 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 And that. Oh, and a little pink bag, which I don't know where it is. Um, the girls have got it. Okay. All right. So, uh, Nutrimedics have um, done a wicked deal. <laughs> They're so nuts, man. Okay. So, you get five brushes. These are like, I don't know if I have seen these cheaper than like 80 bucks. So, um, five brushes, which you just saw I used all of them. They've got double-sided, so yay, so cool. Um, blurring primer, I'm just going to show you as I go if I can carry everything. This mascara, these are like 44 bucks each, um, usually. Um, the foundation, that's usually 74 or 5. Um, the concealer, this. This is so cool. Eyeliner, holy crap. Um, Eyebrow pencil. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is like a whole kit. Um, mineral powder, so you saw that. Mineral powder, that. 
I'm just making sure I don't miss anything. The the peony blush, all of this, right? Plus either one of those or one of those. So either the Lust palette or the matte palette, which is why I said they're quite hard to choose. And these little things, plus a red, which I wish I had it and I don't, a really cool red makeup bag that you can put all of these things in, all of these things. This is a $594, I just dropped my eyebrow pencil, package, including the bag and all of that. Um, and it's $219. $219, but the only problem is, is that you can only buy, you can only get that special through me. So you can't put this through as an order by yourself. Um, and also you might, you might need help choosing your color of your foundation and your um, concealer anyway. So you do need to contact me. You need to message me or you need to email me or you need to get in contact with me somehow. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. And I forgot this. You get one of those as well. All of this stuff plus a red makeup bag, $594 worth of product for $219. And if you are a VIP already, you also get your discount on that. If you're a VIP already, you can actually place your own order for this and the code for you is 157158. Okay, that's me. Hopefully you liked that little basic makeover, which is really wearable, really easy, really good for our age group. Um, really just such an easy way to do make, um, have your makeup look, oh my gosh, my hair is so mental today. Um, really good way to have your makeup um, looking really nice and really, um, I don't know, like, you know, you don't look old. That's the thing, like the whole, all of the whole makeup is really glowy, um, you know, it's a really soft look and it's really wearable day or night. You could actually do this um, for the daytime and then if you wanted to take it into nighttime, just zhuzh up your colour of your lipstick or maybe try a different glitter, glittery colour, um, shimmer colour on your eyelids. It's a perfect look for day or night, but it's so good for our age group. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me. If you have, um, if you're catching this on the replay, probably lucky for you because you can skip through heaps of stuff. <laughs> All right, have an awesome day, girls, and I'll talk to you real soon. Let me know if you want to grab a package because they are epic.